all right what is up everybody and welcome back to another video on the channel regarding the witcher 3 and the next gen update now about a couple of weeks ago we did a comparison video on the channel we compared the next gen version to the old school 1.31 version that had about 180 mods and we basically just put them both side by side to see which one looked better visually it was kind of split half and half some people preferred the next gen look and some people preferred the modded look There's, there was really no right answer but i decided to move on to the next gen version and begin modding that and i was going to start working on a mod showcase for the next gen version but before doing so i decided to make a poll on my youtube channel to ask if you guys would like to see a modding tutorial first and to my surprise the poll was actually split 50 50 so i'm not gonna leave you guys that don't know how to mod in the dark i know a lot of this can be intimidating but believe me it's really not all that hard a lot of it is tedious and time consuming and i would say the witcher 3 is probably the most complex out of the games i've modded but i still wouldn't go as far as to say that it's like extremely difficult like i've modded games like red dead redemption 2 uh elden ring dmc5 resident evil 2 and for the most part those were pretty simple a lot of it was drag and drop and a lot of the witcher 3 is also drag and drop as well but every now and then you might run into one mod that will you know require you to edit a little bit of code but without further ado let's just go ahead and get into the first steps that we should tackle before we even get into downloading the real heavy meaty mods first off if you have the game on steam make sure that you disable auto updates auto updates can be the number one killer to any modded playthrough because normally when they update the game they change the code and it usually breaks any mods that you have installed so what you're going to have to do if the game automatically updates you're going to have to be patient and wait for all the modders to update the mods to accommodate the updates so in order to prevent that in steam i believe you can right click on the game you can go to properties and properties you go to updates and what i like to select is only update the game when i launch it now when you open up steam most likely it's going to prompt you with an update required but what i like to do i like to go to the actual local files and i launch it from the exe that way i won't have to update it before i launch the game now with gog it's a little bit more simpler because i don't think they auto update and with them i believe the game is drm free so you very rarely have to connect to the internet or anything to launch the game so for the most part you can just launch it you know from whatever file you have and it makes it a whole lot easier but if you have auto updates turned on please turn them off it will save you a big headache trust me now as far as where to go to actually get the mods your one-stop shop is going to be nexusmods.com not only is it a good host for the witcher 3 it's a good host for all types of mods like skyrim fallout cyberpunk whatever whatever you can think of it's most likely here but we're going to focus on the witcher 3 just for today now when you go to the main page it's most likely going to hit you with what's new today and anything that's new today is most likely for the next gen version for those that are you know still on the old version you probably want to go to popular all time because you're going to find more stuff there but we're going to check it out anyway because the number one tool that we're going to need right off the bat is a tool called script merger now i know a lot of other people that use other tools as well like a mod manager or vortex i don't have any experience with that i know some people say it might make it easier but I've also heard some people say it makes it more complicated. I can't, you know, I can't give my two cents on that because I've only stuck to script merger. So for this tutorial, we're just going to use this and this alone. Now, the way you navigate these mods, you're going to go to the page and right off the bat, it's going to send you to the description. The description is basically the overview of the mod. It's going to tell you, you know, what it does. Um, it's going to give you notes. It's going to tell you instructions on how to install it. Be sure to read these thoroughly don't just skim over them don't just ignore them be sure to sit here and read it from start to finish because if you make a mistake most likely you're going to come here complaining and saying that oh this didn't work and it's going to be something that you did on your end and it's not an issue with the mod i've seen it a million times where you go to post and people are raging at the mod author thinking that they did something that, that the mod author did something wrong when in reality they just they did something wrong by not following the instructions now you might run into a mod here and there that has nothing on the description it might just say what the mod does and that's about it if that's the case you might find instructions in either files or the post my advice always check the post section before you download anything because the posts 
nine times out of ten the first two are going to be stickies from the author they're going to give you a lot of information that either clarifies you know things that weren't clarified in a description or they're going to tell you problems people are having and how to fix them also it's going to give you a lot of feedback from other users who have downloaded the mod before they're going to say you know this mod is excellent and it worked you know flawlessly or they're going to say i'm having problems with it try to read all of them and try to see why people are having problems and see if you can avoid those problems nine times out of ten if the feedback is mostly positive then you can go ahead and download it if the feedback is mixed you can still go ahead and download it but just be prepared to have some issues and if the feedback is just flat out negative i honestly i would probably just avoid the mod until there's either an updater or until you start seeing you know some type of uh can i talk today <laughs> some type of positive feedback but we're going to go to files because files is the most important tab now with other mods you might check out the images or the videos to see how the mod plays out but this isn't technically a mod that goes into the game this is just a tool that you're going to use so what you're going to do you're going to click on manually download and uh, before i get too ahead of myself make sure you make an account because if not it's going to prompt you to make an account right now once you make one you don't have to worry about signing up for premium and doing all that you can just click so slow download and what it's going to do it's going to start counting down and then it's going to prompt you with a download it's going to be a zip file so make sure you have something like uh when when golly can i talk <laughs> make sure you have something like winrar or 7-zip anything that can you know undo a compressed file that way you have a folder so when you have script merger and you download it for the first time and you unzip it you're going to be presented with you know this folder right here you might not have merge bundle content i believe that's only there because i've already done merges but you're going to have tools the merge inventory and the actual exe yourself so you're going to click the witcher script merger exe now ignore this prompt i don't know why i get that i've been getting that ever since you know i've started modding this next gen version that didn't happen on the old version i really don't know what it means but just disregard it now right now it's scanning for a whole bunch of conflicts because i already have 120 mods installed for you it's not going to do this when you boot it up for the first time it's not going to load it's just going to come right up so it's going to come up and all of this is going to be white you're not going to see anything over here and you're not going to see anything over here as well and this is going to be blank up top the first thing you're going to do you're going to click these dots and then you're going to locate where your witcher 3 is installed for me it's in my c drive in my games folder and there it is right there once you locate it i'm pretty sure what's going to happen is the game is basically i mean the the script merger is going to create a mods folder for you so if you go to where your witcher 3 is installed once you do that the folder should be created but just in case it isn't you're just going to simply right click and go to new and folder and then create a new folder called mods because the main folders that we're going to be adding mods to is the is you know of course the mods folder secondly the dlc folder and then every now and then you might get a mod that goes into the bin folder so when you install a mod don't always assume that it's just going to show up here because you might install a mod and then everything's still white you might be thinking well how come anything didn't show up the only time something is going to show up here is if there's a conflict for example if you install a mod that edits you know Geralt's hair and you also install a mod that you know affects Yennefer's hair and then you also install a mod that affects Geralt's dodges you're not going to see anything here because those three mods don't have anything to do with each other but let's say for example then you download a mod that affects how Geralt swings his sword like it changes the animation that is going to conflict with the mod that changes the animations on how he dodges because those are two mods that affect the character animation so what's going to happen you're going to get a prompt over here that's going to say hey you have two mods that both affect the same script you need to do something with them you need to either click right here in this box and you're going to try to merge them and you're going to hope and pray that it automatically merges them without you having to do anything because that is the best case scenario now if that doesn't happen what's it's going to prompt you with it's going to say hey we tried to automatically merge these things but we can't figure it out because there's some weird stuff going on so we're going to need your help to kind of you know do this and right here is where you begin to lose a lot of people because if i'm being honest i did my whole entire playthrough on 1.31 and i never manual i never did a manual merge whatsoever every time it would come up i would just hit it 
I would hit uh, don't save, exit out of it, and hope the game booted up. If the game booted up, fine. And if it didn't, I would just get rid of the game. But for example, let's just try to merge these two mods right here. We have Shades of Iron, and then we have a folder that's already merged. I might be getting too ahead of myself, but let, let's just try to do this. We go to, we click here, and then we click Create Selected Merge, and it's going to tell me that the out, uh, the output file below already exists, and I'm going to override it. Now, it's going to present me with this. This right here is where you lose a lot of people because they see all this and they're like, yeah, my brain doesn't compute what the hell I'm looking at. And I, I, I can agree with that because there was a lot. There was a long period of time where I did not know what any of this meant. So it's going to tell you right here, there's 34 conflicts, but they were able to solve 33. But there's one that they cannot figure out. So you're going to have to figure that out yourself. So... You're going to have three categories. You're going to have one that's vanilla. This is how the, the game code looks if you don't have anything modded. This is what you already have that is merged in the middle. And this over here is what they are trying to add to this, to this merge file. Nine times out of ten, what you want to do, you usually want to incorporate, you know, what's not in the merge file. So let's just say, for example, I went and incorporated C. You know, th this is just me guessing. I, I don't even know if this is going to work. So now I'm going to hit X and I'm going to hit save and quit. And it said created a new merge file. So now I'm going to click OK. And now it's going to load all over again. And now these two mods are now merged together. But we're not 100% sure if they're going to work out. So in order to test this, after this is done, we're going to try launching the game. Okay, so now that that's done, you see that conflict is no longer there. So to test out if this worked, we're going to go over and we are going to boot up the game. Now, when the game boots up after doing a merge, you're going to get this prompt that you're going to see in a second. This right here, this lets you know that Red Engine is basically scanning the script. It's compiling them and it's letting them know, okay, how are we going to read this? And bam, right off the rip, we got an error. It says that... Right here, game, GUI, old components, GUI tooltip. It found a, un, you know, unexpected whatever. So that just lets me know whatever I just tried to do, it did not work. And it says the section right here. So we're going to look at, let's just look for GUI tooltip components. So we're going to exit and we're going to scroll down until we find it. So here it is, GUI tooltip component. We're going to select this merge that we just tried and we're going to delete it and undo it. Okay, so now that we undid that merge, you can see just how many mods were incorporated into that merge. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to redo it again. So we're going to click over here, create selecting merge. Now you see this is what a automatic merge looks like. It says number of unresolved conflicts zero. So that means you don't have to manually do anything. You just hit OK. It tells you we created it created a new merge. Continue. This right here is magic. You love to see this. Hit continue. Continue. Yes, you love to see it. You love to see it. Keep on going. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. And then you're hit with this. So we tried doing C. I believe before I try doing B, no matter what I do, nothing works. I could probably try doing both B and C, but that probably won't work either. So we're just going to exit out of this, hit quit without saving. So it's going to say merge. That merge was canceled. So we're going to hit yes, continue on. And now we're hit with another merge. But this one right here is more simpler because if you look at all three of these categories, they all kind of look similar. They're not too different. Like uh, this one has unique description. This one has unique description. And this one also has unique description. If you look down at the bottom, it's also there as well. And it's telling you that there is a merge conflict right here. It doesn't know what to put underneath this. So what you need to do, you need to incorporate what's from mod C into this. But most most of the times what's in mod C is different from what it says over here. But in this case, we got lucky because if you look at all of them, they're all the same thing. It says if uh, is armor weapon, whatever the hell that means. So we have a unique situation on our hands where there is two ways that you can solve this merge. The way I did it the first time, I just clicked right here and I hit C and I added that underneath here and then I just hit save. 
you can do it that way and that works or you can copy it and do it the exact same way it's here so you instead of hitting c you can hit well not that <laughs> you can hit b and it's going to give you that little small arrow that's right here and now you can click right here where it says no src line whenever you see this prompt that says no src line you can just ignore this that that's not a merge conflict you can just leave that alone but in this unique instance we're actually going to use this because like i said this is this is a very rare occasion so now that we have this selected now we're going to select b so now that we selected b it looks the exact same as what's in the middle we have the unique then we have a space and then we have the armor or weapon same thing down here now it's a little different over here in mod shield but that's not a big deal we can just hit x we can hit save it the merge is now created and now it's going to load up so the thing with a lot of these manual merges a lot of it does take trial and error sometimes you're going to be able to look up you know the post section in the mod and you might be able to find advice there or sometimes there might be a compatibility patch because for a lot of mods especially like friendly hud or friendly meditation they have a lot of trouble merging with other mods so what other mods will do they'll reach out to the author of a very popular mod and they'll get a patch that makes them compatible that way you either don't have to merge them or you're now able to merge them because you have a patch that you know makes it possible so now that we undid that and now this is back here back where it belongs oh before i launch the game one thing you should know if you have these errors here as long as it's not red and it's purple you're fine but sometimes you might still get an error if you try to load another way to try to correct that you can try to give priority over, over one so for example if i tried to set priority to shades of iron over the merge files i'm gonna get a crash the game the way it said before how the game wouldn't launch that's what's gonna happen if i try to set priority over the merge files you always want to give priority to the merge files over anything else because those are the most important so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna right click clear priority to get rid of that i'm gonna make sure that the the game is making sure this comes first over anything else so now that that's said and done we're gonna boot up the game again and it's gonna do the same process so as you can see bam the game loaded we didn't get a crash and as you can see you know the game is modded i have my different font installed but if i'm being honest i might be getting a little bit too ahead of myself because we need to talk about dependencies because whenever it comes to modding a game there's always going to be something called a dependency mod it's basically a good way to word this it's like the spine of certain mods because without the spine the body can't you know stand up it's just going to crumble and sometimes you need you need mods to attach to it in order for it to you know operate so the few dependency mods that you're going to need for the witcher off the rip you're going to need one called bootstrap so you're going to go to community patch bootstrap and you're going to make sure that you download these files you're going to go to files since we are on the next gen version we're going to download the registry one first then we're going to download the next gen version as well make sure that you like once again you go to description you read the instructions on how to install it you read what it does make sure you're not you know doing something wrong once we have bootstrap out of the way, we're also going to do shared imports. All you got to do is type shared. This is going to come up. Once again, you are going to go to files and then you are going to click on the next gen version. Now, if, if you are on the classical version, then you can go ahead and do that one too. But for now, we're going to be focusing on the next gen version. And also just to give you guys a few ideas on how other mods work, we're going to be checking out a few like no inventory weight, uh, next gen friendly HUD, friendly meditation, loot bags glow without witcher senses and rare items glow like quest items without witcher senses. These are pretty simple besides the friendly mods uh, the reason why i'm going over to friendly mods is because these require a little bit of text editing and that can be somewhat complicated so i'm going to give you guys some clarification on how to properly edit your input xml files so these mods work correctly okay so now that we have our game directory open so we have our mods folder and our dlc folder and we also have the mods that we just installed like I said, they're going to come in zip folders, so make sure that you right click and extract them to a individual folder. 
Now, right off the rip, what you want to do, you want to get the dependencies out the way. So you're going to go to Bootstrap. You're going to go to Mods. So right, right here, they already tell you what, what you're going to need to do. A lot of mods are going to come with either a mods folder or just a DLC folder, or they're going to come with both. And these are the most simplest ones because usually that means you don't have to, you know, edit any input settings. You don't have to edit any XMLs. You just drag and drop. So what we're going to do, we're going to open mods. We're going to take this mod bootstrap and we're going to drag it over here in mods and then we're going to drop it. I already have it in there, so I don't need to do it, but that's basically what you're going to do. You're going to do the same thing with the DLC folder. Take that, drag it over here and then drop it. And then every time you add a mod, please make sure that you only do a single one at a time. Don't try to install 10 mods at a time because if one ends up breaking the game, you're not going to have any idea which one out of the 10 did it. So you're going to have to sit there and uninstall one by one and figure out which one it is. So for safety reasons, only stick to installing one at a time. But it might be safe to say with all these three, uh, I can't think of the word, these three uh, dependencies, you might be able to get away with just installing all three of them. But once you install a mod, you're always going to hit refresh and it's going to refresh, detect any conflicts. And if nothing shows up, then you're usually good. So while that's doing that, we're also going to go to registry. This one only has a mods. It doesn't have a DLC. So we're just going to take the mods. If you want, you don't even have to drag it to the mods folder. You can just drag mods over here, then drop it and it'll just add it to the folder. And then once we do that, lastly, we're going to do shared imports. Shared imports only has a mod one as well. You're going to drag that over and then drop it. And then nine times out of 10 with simple mods like that, that don't affect too much at all. You're not going to get any conflicts. And then once you boot the game up, it'll be fine. You're not even going to notice any type of functionality from these mods. They are simply there as a backbone for other mods. So with that being said, let's start getting into a few easy ones. The first easy one will be loot bags glow. So we can go here, open this up. And here's the mod right here. So we're going to go to our mods folder. We're going to drag this over here and then we're going to drop it. Then we're going to go to our script merger and then we're going to refresh it. Okay. So now that that's done, as you can see, it didn't conflict with anything. So just a test to make sure that this didn't cause any issues, even though there's no conflicts, just to test it out and just to be sure, because it's, it's much better to be safe than sorry. Trust me. We're going to boot up the game and see if the game boots. Getting the prompt, it's compiling the scripts to make sure if there's any problems. And voila, as you can see, we didn't get any errors. Any minute now, the game's gonna boot up, and there you have it. So, that's a job well done. So, now that we have loot bags glow, let's try to add another one like rare items glow. So, we're gonna go here. Now, this one has a bin folder, as you can see. Now, we're gonna go over how how to do bin folders but before we do that we're just going to click on mods and we're going to drag this over here and then we're going to drop it now while we're figuring out what to do with the bin folder we're just going to go ahead and hit refresh and we're going to let that run in the background now you're going to go over to where your game is installed and now you can see there's the bin folder so here is another part of the of the next gen version that i don't know why they did this but it's a thing so normally you will go into your config, you will click R4 game, you will click on user config matrix, and then click on PC. And then once you're in this folder, this is where you're going to drop all your XML files. As you can see, I have a lot already installed. What these do, they basically add mod menus into the actual start menu. So when you click start and you go to mods, there's actually a menu there where you can toggle, you know, certain, you know, aspects of the mod either on and off. You can customize it, you know, for example, the auto apply oils, you can customize it. So, you know, it only applies for certain monsters or in certain scenarios and whatnot. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take this here and we're going to drag it over here and then we're going to drop it. But as you can see, I already have it there, so I'm just going to skip it and I'm not going to do it now. Here's where the next gen version got a little bit complicated because normally you would just drag and drop it. And then when you booted up the game, it would be there. That's not the case now, because now you have these two new files that's called DX 11 file list and DX 12 file list. We're not going to worry about the DX 12 because DirectX 12 version still runs like 
it, it just it runs like ass if i'm being honest so i've been running the dx11 version so what you're gonna do is anytime you add a xml folder or file you're gonna open up this and once you open this normally all of this right here wouldn't be here you would just have a few like input xml hud xml hidden xml and so forth what you would have to do you would have to manually look at what's right here and type the exact same thing dot xml and then put a colon after it and that's what's going to add it into the mod menu but that's if you want to do it manually that's why there is a mod called a menu file list updater you download this mod and you simply drag this into the same location and anytime you add a xml folder you're just going to click this you're going to click run and it's going to automatically do that for you you're not going to have to go and manually manually type it in every single time you're just going to click here click run and it's going to add it for you now let's go back and click on the script merger and ooh, as you can see we have a script uh we have a script error and this one is in purple this one is red so this probably lets me know two things either i'm gonna try to boot the game up and the game is gonna crash or in this gameplay containers actor remains segment of the game whatever that means both of these mods are just flat out not gonna work and we don't want that we want these mods to work so we're so what are we gonna do we're gonna click here on both these boxes and then create selected merge and just like magic it did it automatically we didn't have to sit there and figure out what the error was you love to see it so now that that's done we can go back and we can try adding another one let's try no decorative containers shared imports version so since we have shared imports you're going to make sure you download the shared imports version some mods will have different versions depending on if you have the actual dependent dependency installed or not so as you can see everything worked out fine i would test it out by booting the game up normally that's what you should do but i i know it's gonna work so we're just gonna skip that step for now we're gonna click over here and as you can see no decorative containers also has a bin folder so we're gonna do that same thing actually since we're already here we can just do it now we can go to config r4 open all that we're going to drag it over here and drop it. I already have it there, so I'm just going to skip it. But for you, you're, you're going to, you know, drop it there. And then now that that's done, we're going to go back to our mods folder, click mods, drag this over here, drop it. And then we're going to go back to our script merger and then refresh it again. And we're just going to rinse and repeat, y'all. It, it's, it's as simple as this. And now that that's done, as you can see, no decorative containers also needs to merge with rare items glow so we're going to do another merge highlight them both create a selected merge and bam you love to see it an automatic one see simple mods like this that don't affect too much of the game they're usually automatic merges the ones that are always manual are mods that affect animations like if it's a mod that affects you know how Geralt dodges or how he swings his sword or if he does a taunt I would say seven times out of ten, you're gonna have to do a manual merge, especially if you download more than one mod that affects something like that. So just just be on the lookout for stuff like that. But now that we have the easy mods out the way, let's take a look at a mod that I believe is probably one, if not the most complicated one to do, and it's probably you know my favorite one or two of my favorite ones, and those are the friendly mods. That is friendly HUD and friendly meditation. Let's start off with Friendly HUD. When you go to Friendly HUD, it's going to give you the mod. Now, normally, you would think to just drag this and drop this over here. But sometimes, it is a good idea to check inside the mod folder. Because as you can see, we have all these. We have a README. We have a User Settings. We have an Input Settings. And then we also have the DX12. Uh, and then we also have a Bin folder on top of that. There's a lot going on in this mod, and you might be looking at this thinking like, where do I even start? First off, what you always want to do, you want to start with the README. The README is going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on what to do, how to do it. I know it looks like a very long wall of text, but believe me, if you want this to work right, you know, you might not have to read all of it, but at the very least, like skim through it and make sure you at least read the configuration and the uh, how to install it. 
but I already know how to do it. So we're not going to read that. We're going to go here and we're going to check out this input settings dot part. Now you're looking at all this and you're like, what the heck is all this? These are basically key binds to make the mod work because if you just install this mod, you, there, there's certain things you have to press in, in the game to activate it. So it tells you right here, IK underscore F2 equals action toggle 3D markers. So when you're in the game, if you hit F2, that's going to toggle the 3D markers from this mod. And as you can see, it gives you a category for the boat, boat passenger, combat, combat replacer. And you might be thinking, where, where the heck does all this go? It's going to go inside your documents folder. So if you go to documents, you're going to find where your Witcher 3 is at. You're going to scroll down to the bottom. You're going to have the Witcher 3. And as you can see, you have user settings and you have input settings and then you have the DX12 user settings, but we don't, I'm not going to bother with that. Input settings is what you're going to click on. And then it's going to give you the inputs that you have for your game already. Now, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go back to that input settings that you got from friendly, friendly hood. You're going to highlight and copy all of this, copy it. And then you're going to go over here No, not that one, not that one. And then you're going to hit enter a few times, get right here and then paste it. Don't worry about making sure that you paste it underneath the right category. Cause what's going to happen, you're going to paste it on top. And then once the game launches after doing that, it's going to reorganize everything automatically. So if you put something, if you create like another category for boat after the game launches, it's going to take what you put and merge it into the boat category. So you don't have to worry about making sure you type, you know, base camera movement underneath base camera movement. You can just literally go up here, hit enter and then paste it. And what that's going to do, it's going to allow the actual key bindings to work within the game. So once you get into the game and you hit F10 or F2 or whatever, it's actually going to work. Now, if you don't want that, you don't have to do that, but you're going to lose a lot of functionality of the mod. So, you know, you just be on the lookout for that. So we're going to close out of that for now. That's how you do input settings. User settings is the same thing. You know, user settings, well, not the same thing as inputs. User settings are basically the things you toggle in the menu. So if you go to your graphic settings and you toggle on ray tracing and uh, like global illumination and stuff like that, that's gonna save to your user settings. So any mod that comes with a user settings file, that means that you're gonna have to, you know, copy and paste it there. Where's my folders? I'm kind of losing track of what I'm doing here. Hang on a second. So in the, in the, in the friendly HUD, you have user settings. You're gonna go here and the same thing. You're going to highlight all of this and then you're going to copy it. I think I closed out of user settings by accident, but you would just go forward, go to user settings and then you get same thing. You're going to hit enter a few times, right click, paste it, and then make sure you save it. And then once you save it, boot up the game and it's going to automatically reload every relocate everything. So that's how you do user settings and then input settings. Sounds a little complicated, but believe me, the more you do it, the more you'll get the hang of it. So let's get on to the real hard part, which is the bin folder. Because if you go to the bin folder and you go to config, you're most likely expecting just this right here to have the mod friendly HUD uh, config that that's expected. But as you can see, you have a input.xml folder. Once you open that, it's going to prompt you with this. And then you're going to take one look at this. And you're going to be like, what, what the hell am I looking at? What is all this? Basically, all you need to look for is this right here. You need to find where it says friendly HUD begin and friendly HUD end. any mod that you download. You're always going to look for the mod name. You're going to look where it begins and you're going to look where it ends. A very easy rookie mistake to make is just to say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go here. I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to go to my vanilla, um, input XML. If I can find it, I had one. I need to see where exactly, where did I put it at? This is what your XML is going to look like vanilla. If you haven't done any editing to it, this is what it's going to look like. Now let's compare it to the one that came with friendly hood. As you can see right off the, right off the bat, they have this big paragraph up here where it begins. So what you're going to do. You're going to copy this. You're going to go to your vanilla 
and try to look at where it begins you notice it's right on top of this where it says group builder input pc input and all this right here that same line right here is up top right here so what you can do you can just hit enter and now that we're right there you can just right click and then paste and if you compare the two now it looks the same but remember like i said don't make the rookie mistake and just think that once you did that that's all you have to do because there's another section down here so you're going to make sure that you copy this and then also pay attention to where this is at notice that it's underneath where it says you know var builder input id dismount display you know try try to look for this line in your vanilla folder so go to vanilla and bam it says it right here input id dismount so click right here you're going to hit enter and then you're going to copy and then paste so if you compare the two now it looks simple i mean not simple now it looks very similar scroll down again make sure you don't see any more friendly hub begin and end and then once you're done we can go over here you can hit file you can hit save and there you go friendly hud is now implemented into your input xml now that part is easy the difficult part comes when you have to add friendly friendly meditation because friendly meditation goes hand in hand now if we go to our friendly meditation folder if i can find it so we're going to go here to friendly meditation and friendly meditation is the same thing we go inside the folder bam we get the user settings the input settings so the same thing you did for friendly hud you're going to do the same thing for friendly meditation and also the same thing for the bin folder now you're going to go come over here come to pc and then open the input xml that's in here now it's going to bring this up now here is going to show you where friendly meditation begins and where it ends but the same thing as friendly hud you're going to pay attention to where it is actually at so right here same thing it's at the beginning so what you would do is you would just highlight this you would copy it go to vanilla come up here and then paste it so it's right on top of friendly hub begins and then you're also going to look for any other section so bam here's another one right here friendly meditation this is where it begins and this is where it ends but notice that this one is also under the you know input id dismount so we're going to do the same thing that we did with the other one come down here where it says input id dismount hit enter and then paste it and it's right on top of friendly hood i think the first time i did this i just pasted both of these up top and thought it was fine and the way script uh the way script merger will confirm that you did this wrong it'll have uh, a non-bundled xml script error if you if you have that right here and it shows up as red that lets you know that you did not type this right you need to either go back and fix it or type it again i believe this is correct but just to double check here is my correct version so let's compare this these are definitely not the same i did something completely different okay so how did i do it in this one um actually disregard everything i said about the other one this is how it's supposed to go you're supposed to have friendly hud right up here on top and then right underneath that you're gonna put friendly meditation begin and then end it right at friendly meditation end then underneath that that's where you're going to have the first line that was normally in the vanilla input.xml and then at the end of that you're going to incorporate the second friendly hud begin and then go all the way to friendly hud end and then underneath that that's where you're going to add the second friendly meditation begin and end so this is what it should look like at the end if you're still looking at this and you're like i, I still can't duplicate that I might do you guys a favor and just upload this. So if you guys want to, you know, do this without having to do it yourself, you can just download the file I have and then there you have it. But this right here, in my opinion, is the most complicated part aside from, you know, doing a manual merge. So this right here and doing a manual merge in the script merger is where you will lose a lot of people. And I, I don't blame you. I truly do not blame you because a lot of this 
it's it takes a lot of patience it takes a whole lot of patience a lot of trial and error you're going to be you know trying it breaking the game going to nexus mods finding out why you broke it and and so forth it takes a lot of time but believe me when you finally do get a lot of these mods to work you can change the witcher 3 into a entirely new experience you you can keep it similar to the vanilla game or you can like you know flip the game on its head you can have magic spells you know be a vampire be a female you can experiment do whatever the hell you want so without further ado we're going to end this video off by just showing you guys what the mod menu looks like in game once you have everything loaded up so if we go to options you're now going to be presented with this new mod section and when you click here you're going to have all your mods that you downloaded now mine's a little bit different because you know i have mine in subcategories i have a mod subcategory i have a combat subcategory and i have a gameplay sub subcategory if you want to learn how to do these subcategories i can do a video explaining that as well because i believe you can only have a limit of 10 mods in this menu and then after 10 you're going to start having some very glitchy behavior to where if you try to click like anything underneath the 10th one, it's not going to work. So there's a certain mod you have to install that allows you to create subfolders like this. So when I go into mods, I have more. And if I go into combat, I have more here. And if I go into gameplay, I have more there. So I can do a video on that if you guys want. But another thing, if your game boots up, that's a good thing but don't assume that because the game booted up everything is working always load into the game and check the mod you just installed so if you just installed a mod like friendly hud load into the game and see if you notice anything different about the hud if you install the mod that in, you know changes Geralt's animations check Geralt, try to dodge try to swing his sword and see if he does anything different so as you can see my hud is not there but if I hit my hotkeys that I set friendly HUD up to, bam, it shows up. So with the simple press of a button, I can get rid of the HUD. I can bring it back. Or if I hit F2, I have these 3D markers. So it's a very minimalistic thing. If I look away, God, I am dropping a lot of frames because I'm recording in OBS. This, this, this game can be very CPU heavy at times. Yeah, this might not be looking too good, but I'm just showing you guys, you know, how it all works but yeah um that's basically the gist of how to mod the game if i forgot anything i'll try to incorporate it in post or maybe do a follow-up video but that right there is basically how you mod the game as you can see okay no we're we're gonna stop right there because we're already dropping a lot of frames i'm getting a lot of encoding errors leave that alone but we're going to save this for another video where we're actually going to do the mod showcase. Until then, I appreciate those that, you know, stay tuned and listen to me thoroughly. But until the next time, we are outro. You feel me?